Hey y'all, I'm gonna go ahead here and close the door to the root room. Um, well, I'm gonna push it up because the baby's uh, little swing is up. So give me a second while I take this down because I didn't know she put this thing back up and I can't close the door when this thing is not up. Trying a new Bluetooth. Uh, can you guys hear me well? Because um, I need it for conference calls at the day job. But anyways, I'm, and, I'm, and it's actually very helpful because right now what I'm doing is I'm bagging herbs, roots, and resins, and oils, and, you know, bottling oils for um, Hoodoo 201. Excellent. Glad you can hear me. Excellent. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about what I have been experiencing um, as in the role of recruiter, the spirits have given me the responsibility of recruiting or um, asking people if they would be interested in initiating into our house. As you all know, anytime we're dealing with people and finances and things like that, as a small business owner, it's always very interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm like Janet, I'm in control. Now I can't sing, so I'm not even gonna try. Anyways, you know what I love about voodoo music? That anybody can sing voodoo music and sound good, okay? And it was so funny because I used to, uh, when I was initiating, I told them I sounded like a goat when I sang. And so anytime they would bust me singing voodoo songs, they would stop to hear me sing because I did not like, I don't like to sing in front of like people because I've always been told I can't sing. And so every time they would turn, when they would hear me singing, I would stop singing. I would go ah, 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 like that goat in the video. Yeah. Anyway, but seriously, you know, I put up um, announcements. Okay. For a uh, possible initiation, head washing and, and the like. Okay. And I get tremendous response, okay? So I learned the hard way, always, don't wait until they have their initiation, I mean, their, uh, yeah, their initiation divination with my mambo to tell them what the costs are, okay? So, I put up, you funny, Amber, um, I put up the, uh, 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 um, I have a webinar that I've d done before for people who are interested in initiation. Now, I'm black too. So I got like this thing about how our people taught us. And I'm sure that it's very African about like pleasantries and things like that before you start talking about money. In African culture, folks, before they do business, they will sit down. They will have tea, coffee, whatever, cola nuts, whatever. It is considered rude to just jump in and start talking about money. But we are dealing a lot of times with Americans, okay? I need people to understand a few things. And so that's why I'm making this video. And why I'm going to send this video before I send the webinar to anyone who says they are interested in initiating into an African traditional religion. First point. We, many of us, I find that the most faithful people in ATRs were also the most faithful Christians. And when you were in a church, and I know I did, to the tune of thousands of dollars a year, I added up a tenth of my income to support the workings of my church. Okay? Do not think for one moment now, they used to get you on the appeal that, you know, you pay your initiation once and you were uh, once and done. Not if your house is worth a damn, okay? In my house, my mambo is trying to open a school for voodoo children so that they do not have to go to these Christian schools that indoctrinate them. She's had an orphanage before. She has a lot of big plans that um, American money goes a long way in Haiti that can help with this. 
to become part of an ATR does not mean that you just all of a sudden pay your initiation fee, you in like Flynn, and you don't owe anything to anybody else. That's not the way it should be done. Okay? Secondly, charity. Every month, our house feeds needless and homely pe homeless people. Not homely. Homeless. Homeless people in Haiti. Every month, my mom, but whether she has food in her house or not, goes out and feeds hungry people. These same hungry people have been given bags of rice by the Christians telling them to love Jesus. They're bribing people spiritually over there with food. Okay? Food. You know, everybody's so down for Africa and the children of the diaspora until it's time to put your money where your mouth is and trust and believe. There, I mean, you know, after I initiated, I, I account two things about the reason why business has gone astronomically well for me. One of them, the most important one, is my relationship with my spirits and my initiation. I think that not just, um, and make no doubt, Mambo Supwin is a Mambo in training. I am not a Mambo Asagwe. I'm not a high priestess, okay? So I want to get that out of the way. And, and, and one day I will be. But all, everything has to happen in the time where the spirits want it to happen for you. And so I make no secret about my rank in voodoo. Another thing, this is going to take you in any ATR the rest of your life to learn. If you are not from this culture and you don't speak the language and you don't understand all of the intricacies, like I, my, my mambo, and I'm going to tell y'all, be straight up for real. We receive education, okay? Real education. That most people who go to Haiti and initiate with a lot of mambos and guns, and I'm not going to say all of them, but I'm going to say a great deal of them, they don't teach you anything. Why? Because they want you to pay them to do the work for them when you need it. I know the people, especially the clear folks, all they know how to do is write uh, veves and cornmeal on the ground. I mean, and just to learn all of the veves, baby. Understand that initiation is not the destination. It is the beginning of the journey. But it is not an inexpensive journey. And it is not a cheap journey. And once you go and you initiate and you see all the things that are involved, you just have no idea, at least in my house, the way my mambo does things, what it takes to actually accomplish this. And she still tries to do reasonable pricing because voodoo still remains one of the least expensive initiations in, in, in the ATRs. But she's had to go up on pricing. I, 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 you just have no idea until you are in that situation. And I think that a lot of us are so jaded and so taken advantage of by the church that we are reticent to send our money, especially to foreign people that we don't know. And that is one of the reasons why, you know, when I recruit people and if my mambo, I got my, my mambo, when she, we asked her, how do you want us to represent your house? And she said, I want you to be honest. I want you to be trustworthy. I want our house to have a reputation of not being on bullshit that, um, oh, Edna's on. Edna has renamed on my Facebook Lives, Liz Live. And so I think that's really cool. This is a Liz Live. But my mama wanted us just to be honest people. And I was like, cool, because that's who I am already. You know, you know, you guys have been really great. When we had a financial emergency at the Jevo, we raised the money like in several hours. Um, but there are needs every day. So if you are initiated in a tradition and you are not making regular donations to your socie, your house, your ELA, shame on you. The reality of the matter is a mambo asagwe and a ungan asagwe, they're not supposed to work. Did you know that? Their full-time job is to be 
your mambo or your ngan. So, how they gonna eat? It's not, you know, think about like what spell work costs and what spell work costs for people that don't have a lot of money. She's doing a lot of stuff for people for free. And then when she is getting paid, she ain't getting paid like what you think people are getting paid. Okay. I always caution people when they come to me for spell work. I'm like, boo, boo. You know, it starts at 100 but chances are it's going to be several hundred dollars for me to do this work for you. Why? Because if you could take a look at the financial records of my own company and what I've spent. My initiation got put off. We went from September to October to December to March. My airline ticket went up substantially with all of those changes. I had a $75 credit. I think it expires in May. After all that overpayment and then paying, you know, we go for a pilgrimage and you pay for a hotel. This this ain't cheap, y'all. I'm not bawling, even though sales have been really, really good. You know, I want to see them in the six figures this year. But uh, I'm going to tell you that half of them six figures goes right back in to supplies or books or training so that I can... Um, yes, and, and that's another thing, payment plans, so that I can keep this ministry going. But it's not making me rich, okay? It is definitely the lawas have always. And that's why I was saying, you know, it's about the energy. You know, Mambo, Mambo gives payment plans to people, but I'm sorry, I don't like payment plans because people be on some bullshit with payment plans. When you are ready to walk this walk, just start saving. Tithe your, tithe, first of all, get the practice of tithing for yourself. Save 10% for yourself. Keep putting it away till you've got about $5,000 before you even start looking. And I don't care what, that, that is a like drop in the bucket. It's probably not going to be all the money that you need, but at least you will have something to put down. Okay. What I found with pay payment plans is people don't pay. It's garbage. And we have to also get into, there's a lot of practices that we need. Yep, right. You, you paid your payment plan and, and a lot of people pay their payment plans, but too many of them do not. The, when I recruited people to come and initiate with me, we started, man, Oh, boy. Yeah, as an artist, mm, no. No work without a 50% deposit. Uh, no custom work. But when we started that journey, we started with 15 people. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, we went, I went, there was four of us from the U.S. And one of us was already in Haiti that actually went through to initiation. And so that's what I've come to expect as far as attrition rates in recruitment. But I'm going to tell you this as well. Many times, it, people did not keep going because of finances. There are ways that you can do work to manifest money, okay? But when you get committed, you may not see a way. But if the spirit see a way for you, it will happen. But you got to believe and you have to put forth the mundane discipline to put that money away. So we started off with like four or five people for head washing. We got one person now. We're in, and so we're going to move it. In our house, we have a charity every month. Minimum $25. That's $25. To send a mambo to help her feed the homeless. And we had people sending a dollar. And getting PayPal fees taken out. That don't make no sense. Even when you were a Christian and you tithed and you gave in the church, I, I would know. I want to know how many people actually tithed and went without. Because when I tithed in my church, I did not go without. Uh, my needs were met. I'm not talking about how some of these prosperity preachers be going at you, talking about, you know, if you tithe, you know, God's going to make you a baller, shot caller. It's the energy of giving. 
You got to create that reciprocal energy. And if you are giving nothing, guess what? There's no energy to reciprocate. So, you know, I just wanted to come on here tonight. Let me grab a couple of bags. I need to be making some progress with these student kits. I'm getting some frankincense and myrrh going on here. Exactly. If the spirit sees fit for you, there's nothing. You got to, the first thing, I keep telling people about magic. Magic ain't always all this stuff. If I don't have myrrh, I can't do it or something like that. Very rare, unless it is something specific to your religion that requires a particular ritual item. Though there are situations like that. But too many people are kind of caught up on, this is very interesting, and it's a branch in the myrrh, probably from the tree where they got the myrrh. Very cool. Nice to have those types of things show up in your, in your root work. Um, that's special. But, you know, the reality of the matter is the spirits will make a way out of no way. Uh, there's a sister who is initiating with us. And she went from crying on the internet one day where I had to call her and be like, take that shit down. Stop letting everybody see you sweat. When people see what hurts you and bothers you and makes you cry, that weakens you. Not because you cry. Cry is fine. Crying it does not make you weak. But people know where to hit you. People know what bothers you. People know what can break you down. So that's where the saying, never let them see you sweat, comes from. Because when you have spirit behind you, there ain't shit that you can't do. And you can't tell me that it's not true. And what's real fucked up is y'all believe this when you were Christians, but you somehow have fallen off as witches. There is no room for doubt in the occult, in witchcraft, in voodoo, in ATRs. There's no room. There's no room for doubt in Christianity. So I want to know what the hell y'all rolling up in here bringing your colonial doubts. Okay? You cannot do that and succeed fear i told somebody the other day they was talking about that you know whatever you feel about sending in your uh dna to some uh company i did it maybe if i thought about it today i'd be like that's all right but i you know because my daughter was going off about the possibility of them using it with insurance and things like that because she was like is there a way i can revoke that dna test but let me tell you something if you was born in a United States hospital, and that's why we need more midwives, they got your DNA already. They took your blood at birth and did several tests. Why do I know this? Because they found out that my niece had sickle cell disease. How do you find that out with a blood test? Those things, they got your DNA. They got your blood. They got your DNA. So if they want to do something with it, they can, and then the, she's talking about how the hospitals don't have to give it, but the other com the other companies can't. Whatever. It was more important for me, cause I, to know the my people. There's so many unanswered questions. Um, right, the military definitely got your shit. But trust me, when you're talking about these phones and these other listening devices, they've been listening in on you since the beginning of time. I don't know if you ever remember, I think the movie was The Client, when Tom Cruise took his wife out in the backyard and was whispering in her ear because the house was bugged. And everything in here is capable of listening to you, even when you don't have it turned on. So you can do one or two things. You can get rid of all this shit. No TV. No, definitely no smart TV. No computers. No phones. Or you could be real careful about what you say. I mean, you don't want to be doing no illegal shit where people can hear you. But see, as far as my beliefs about being a warrior for people of color, about my beliefs and my spirits and my gods, I'll shout that shit from the rooftops. I will die if I have to. If they, if they come around crucifying witches and voodoo saints and burn us at the stake again, well, I guess I'm going to fucking burn, but I'm going to be one fucking spirit that folks ain't going to want to deal with because I'm coming back Petro if they burn me. So, do what you want. 
But don't be led by the spirit of fear. Fear stops you from every fucking thing. But understand this. In my house, with my mambo, and she has shown it to me because I went there, I've been there. We are using money to change people's lives, to bring them back to the ancestors, to bring them back to voodoo. And you can't do that with no money. And guess what? Your initiation fees, they don't go towards none of that. You, I mean, spectacle's not even the word. And the things that the people who come, the mumbles and guns who come and help with Kanzo, what they do to get there. Have you ever seen what bus transportation is like in Haiti? So y'all just don't understand that it takes money to do this. Oh, thank you, Karen. It takes money to do this. Thousands of dollars in the past month. I've spent a thousand dollars on herbs wholesale to meet the demands of this business. And I, you know, when the, when the sales are high and the money is good, that's when I got to buy because I got to buy. You guys want to buy? I got to buy. Money makes the fucking world go around. See, somehow you got fucked up by the church. Somehow they told you money was the root of all evil. No, evil is the root of all evil. Ignorance is the root of all evil. No, people are the root of all evil. Money's just paper and metal. Which is very, very fucking much needed and wanted and desired. And that is what I love about voodoo and what I love about the ATRs. They don't want you to be broke. They don't want you to be poor. But guess what? If you're going to be stingy with them and the mission to release our people... From struggle, guess what? You are not going to get anything. You are going to, if you don't put that out there, if you don't have a prosperity altar, you better get you one. And you better take that money when you go to feed homeless people or when you go to do your work at the graveyard, okay? No, exactly. We are not meant to. That's, that's that colonial mindset that to be closer to God, we have to suffer and we have to go to it out. First of all, God don't need your money. Bandie, Olokun, whoever you call that spirit, the goddess, the God, the creator, they own everything. So who are we giving this money to? When you give money at church, and that's why you have to be very careful about who you're giving your money to. I'm not giving money to the United Way. I know that their executives make six figures. What the fuck? I'm not giving money to any organization that has an executive board that gets a lion's share of the money that comes into the fucking organization. Now, where do I donate money to? For my birthday, I'm going to be asking you all to donate to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Unless Mambo has a nonprofit in Haiti that she wants us to donate to. They don't ever charge anyone for treatment. You understand me? St. Jude's does not charge anyone for treatment. You know, that's the thing. If you if you have that mindset about giving, if I give and I won't have nothing. You ain't gonna have nothing, you know. You gotta give to receive. It's called reciprocity. That is not a Christian concept. Our religions, our people are older than Christianity. Tithing is older than Christianity. You do realize that everything they got in the Bible, they got it from someplace else. But let a Negro hear about tithing. Dad go running for the goddamn hills. But I'm going to tell you something. You are not going to reach your spiritual goals by being stingy. And unfortunately, we've had way too many. One of my brothers is on here. We've had way too many people come to, and he was one of the, the four out of the 15 people that we recruited that actually went to Haiti. 
And you got to know that, you know, and, you know, and there are some days where I'm just like, we need something else. We got to do something else. I don't have it. So I'll be like, spirits, make a way. Let me have it. Let me give it. And it's not just my house. I'm talking about to whatever somebody needs. When I was in college, I didn't have a car. I didn't have a car until my senior, junior year, senior year. I had, I had two cars. I'll have to tell you those stories at another time. But both of them, I'm going to tell you real quick. The first one was a Ford Fairmont I bought for $300. That was fishtailing real wheel drive in the Midwest winters. And it had a gasket leak for the oil pan and the transmission. I drove that bitch literally to the wheels fall off. Okay. Then I had my husband, my first husband's parents gave us a, a, a an Omega, Plymouth Omega or something like that. Love that little car. Drive that damn car and shit would fall off of it on the street. And if you lifted the carpet up, you could see the road passing underneath. But I had a car. And I promised God at that time that I would never let someone walk as long as I had a car. I would pick people up off the street I didn't even know. I would pick people up off the street in Chicago, uh, women with, out there with their babies in the cold standing on a CTA bus stop. And let me tell you, I've had car problems just like the next one. I ain't never been stranded on the side of the road. I've never had a breakdown where I was not in the immediate area of safety and I have had very few breakdowns and I didn't have a new car until I was 42 fucking years old after I had declared bankruptcy. But I would stand on the bus stop waiting for my number six, I think it was in decal, freezing my motherfucking ass off and that might have been the number two. And I promise God that if you give me a car, nobody will walk. Nobody will walk. And I've risked my life. I had a little old white lady. It was cold. It was frozen. It was all messed up. And I'm in Chicago. And I'm at the grocery store. And I see this woman with a rolling shopping cart, which is a lot of like the little old Polish ladies used to push around in my neighborhood. And I came up to her and I said, if you wait for me to go in here and run and get a couple of things. And I had my toddler. No, no, I didn't. I didn't have a, uh, my youngest with me yet. And I said, if you wait a few minutes, I'll take you home. And that woman looked at me and she said, who are you to help me? I said, I'm a child of God. And you are too. And I, here's my business card. I worked for Tribune at the time. And when, it was the saddest thing because when I got my few little items that I had, she was no longer in the front of the store and she'd gone home. In the cold, barely able to walk, hunchback, pushing a shopping cart out in that weather. You know, like I said, um, now we got so many folks in the car, car seats, and my family, when we're all in the car, we don't even fit in that car well. And I'm asking the spirits to bless us with a minivan because <laughs> these kids... We need room. Um, but minivans are $50,000 now. And I'm just like, bitch, what? $50,000? But the thing is, is I know that I'm going to get what I need when I need it. And I've seen my mama do some amazing things. Okay? Um, with the, uh, the money that we've given. And we have. You know, there are several people in our house or, or who are initiating on here. And things are actually, you know, going on an uphill thing. But I, I'm very disappointed with recruiting people that don't understand that you have to pay your initiation fees. I don't like payment plans. And that afterwards and during the initiation process... You know, there are things we have to do to support our spiritual house. And when we initiated, we didn't have a roof on our jello. We didn't have a bathroom, okay? She works really hard and she gives a lot of people breaks and, you know, um, she will give her last and then we have to pick up the slack when she needs. That doesn't bother me. It never has. And I'm telling y'all, 
the more that I have helped, right, <laughs> where the spirit's been, I, 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 who I don't understand what you said, where the spirit's been at all. Y'all didn't have anything. Well, we di we didn't have our stuff for Conzo because it got caught in customs. <laughs> I know that. But um, we had an amazing Conzo, even though we were on a limited budget shoestring. Um, I never probably laughed or cried so hard in my life. And I know that we we had some stumbling blocks. A lot of it was because of three hurricanes. You know, our initiation was severely delayed, but they keep getting better and better. And when I watched what it took to get all these people to come on a Haitian bus from Port-au-Prince and me and, 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 and Preston helped Mumbo drive, I drove in Haiti. And finally, I just had to look at Preston and be like, take the wheel, Preston, take the wheel. <laughs> Because it was, it was, it was interesting, but it's more scary for me to drive here, truthfully. Although there are no stop signs and there are no traffic lights. <laughs> I never drove, it was like organized chaos. It was a really great experience. It, that experience helped me to eliminate a lot of my fears. And for that, I am forever grateful. But I just have to put that out here to y'all. Because in that class of 15 people, the fact that only four of us fulfilled our spiritual requirements and then went on to continue to contribute is disappointing. Because when we put this out here, nobody's pressuring you, okay? This ain't like the church either. You know how they get you in the church, come one, come all, come po folks, come whatever. And then they close the door after the third offering. Talking about, we ain't got enough money. We going to have one more goddamn fish fry. It's not like that. But realistically, I need people to understand that there are financial needs of any house. Priests and priestess, high priests, high priestesses, that should be their job. Their food, their basic housing. And then what about retirement? We don't have anything set up for our priests and priestesses when they can no longer care for themselves. Okay? That is another thing that we have to consider. We need homes that are ATR centered for our retired or um people who are unable to practice anymore they you know a lot of people you know they do have to depend on their godchildren so understand that understand that if you initiate in our house and i recruit you bring you in i am your godmother and our my mother is your spiritual mother what i don't want to see anymore because i'm, I'm really frustrated with this y'all i don't have a bathroom in my basement Okay, and that you have to be secluded for love tech. It costs money to rent a porta potty. Okay, I, I I used a bucket when I was in the Jevo, and I think that you know I'd empty the bucket for anybody that came here. But I'm just gonna try to rent a porta potty. But you can't do that when people who say they're going to pay their fees do not. So I'm going to send this before, um. Anybody watches any videos about recruitment and joining an ATR and all of that stuff, um, you know, I'm, I'm, let me look at, at what you're saying, Ochani. We are sitting part to a grand period so they can still have income. Exactly. You know, and we do. We see that and they do live a long time. But what, you know, we got to take care of each other. And the mission of our house, Mumbo has a lot of wonderful and amazing ideas. And one of the things she taught us is don't be telling everybody about your ideas because people steal them and then do them improperly. But we can't do that without a strong house. And like I said, I know that when I gave my money to Jesus, I did not go without. It's got nothing to do with the deity. It's got to do with the spirit. It's got to do with your spirit. It's got to do with the spirit of reciprocity. So I'm going to just 
finish this video because I need to finish my students' boxes before they come kicking my ass. I need to clean my altars. There are so many things that I need to do. And it is very overwhelming. So there's a couple things that we have to understand about this walk and this path. It's not put here for your comfort. I, uh, initiation was not made for my comfort. It was completely different than what I expected and amazing all at the same time. Trust me. And nobody's going to tell you exactly what it's like. You got to go there. Secondly, these, even though we work with spirit and even though we perform magic, if magic made you a millionaire, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. I would be in Jamaica smoking a big ass blunt with a cabana boy. I wouldn't be sitting here in Reynoldsburg, fucking cold ass Ohio in the middle of the winter if magic makes you a millionaire. So there are some very real ramifications to financial support of whatever religion you claim to love. Put your money where your mouth is. Do not approach any priest or priestesses asking about head washing, initiation, magical work, and not expect to pay for it. And depending on the level of initiation and the intensity of the magical work, understand the budget will grow. And ain't nothing wrong with that. You've been taught that Asking for money, getting money, refusing money is a bad, you know, getting money and obtaining money is a bad thing because we have been exposed to so many cheaters in the Christian church. Okay? People that money your problems, send me your problems. Each person in our house receives things um, that are their mandates. As an initiate. And they are to live up to those. Okay. And everybody's financial contribution will be different. And let me tell you something. Unlike the church. Spirit understands. They understand. And if you don't have it. You tell. I'm telling you. See in, in a lot of religions. The people don't understand that concept of commanding a spirit to do something for you. Okay. There are ways to respectfully command what you want and what you need from your spirit. And you let them know, hey, you're not going to get this if I don't get this. In fact, there are certain things where you can take things from spirits and be like, till you give me what I need, you're not going to have this. Okay? But when you get it, you better damn well pay that spirit what you said you'd give them for their help. And that paying of the spirit can be contributions to your spiritual house. You don't have to throw money up on an altar that ain't never going to get used. But you can take that money and send it to your house. I have people that come to visit me and they bring candy for the marasa. They put money in the prosperity bucket. And so, like, let me tell you what I do with my prosperity money. When the kids come, it depends on your religion. If you have your own altars and you're doing your own personal gnosis, you have to go and spirit guide you. But your ancestor money, like when people come and visit me, they bring beer because they know my ancestors is drunks. They bring cake. They bring all kinds of things. And I give it to them. But if they leave money on that altar, I take it and buy things from my ancestors prosperity altar when the little kids come around here knocking on the door and they're selling candy bars girl scout cookies or just need some money for school that i got money at the front door i just reach in that prosperity altar and i give when you're seeing people on the street talking about they ain't got no food to eat people talking about i ain't got no money and they just gonna use it for drugs anyway but let me tell you one motherfucking thing when you are homeless you don't fluff garbage you don't go to sleep peacefully in a goddamn dumpster you pass out in a dumpster and if i was homeless i'd be high as fuck i'd be drunk i'd be something so i could sleep at night judging people because they live on the street and treating them like they're less than human because they may have a substance disease. The fuck has happened to us? But what's really bad, what really fucking twist my screws equally is y'all want the benefits of spirit, 
but you don't want to pay. And that's not happening here. Now, I do a lot of charity, readings, work, help people out, no charge. Okay? Brittany's trying to reach me. Rikia! They're in the... Text Brittany and tell her to come over, please. Well, come in here because I'm doing a Facebook Live and I'm on a roll and I'm being interrupted. Because nothing ever goes the way it's supposed to. And that's okay. I've gotten used to it. But I just, you know, I, I my mumbo, you know, text Brittany, tell her, yes, come bring whoever. I We're always here. I don't know why people feel like they have to call first. Family has to call first. Text her, tell her I'm doing a Facebook Live. And yes, bring her ass because I need help. Because y'all down there doing that and she can be up here doing this with me. Okay? okay? Yeah, she's on her way. I'm just, I got to get back to my peoples. Because I'll talk to you about it in a minute. Thank you, boo. Okay. What is wrong? Why are you looking at me crazy? Hi. You know what? Why are you smoking and working? This is not a good mix. I'm fine. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? I'm hot. <laughs> we're, we're doing a little basement remodeling. Um, again. So... I'm, 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 I just want y'all to, to have this. I, I wish there was a way for me to edit videos because I get disturbed every time I do a Facebook Live. I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb every time I do a Facebook Live. Because don't nobody call me all goddamn day. And then the minute I get on here with y'all, the phone blowing up and shit. Okay? But, right. There's so many layers to this. And let me tell you something. And I'm just going to be real honest with you all. Every dime I've sent, I, I have been blessed. Do you hear me? Beyond measure. I am no longer paycheck to paycheck. Okay? You know how we roll in this house. That girl, they were down there pulling stuff out of the basement to put in the loft upstairs and trying to make more room for more storage. It's just, ah. Uh. But I'm blessed, y'all. The spirits got me this house. Do you understand that in 2009 I was foreclosed on? That I did not have anything but my 10-year-old fucking Jeep. And when it was time to buy this house, they couldn't find my tax returns. And the, I said, oh, good, we got to do something about this. Help me. I St. Jude, help me. And they did. And I, they were like, oh, we'll make an exception. And then the next thing I know, here comes my tax, is in my tax return and all this other stuff. But, but let me tell you. It is not perfect. Life is not easy. And this religion, I am, oh my God. Voodoo is so much. Sometimes when Mumbo is educating us and I sit there and I'm like, I can't even do basic Creole. And this is just so hard. And this is so much. And I'm 50, I'll be 50 years old. And this is more than my mind can take. I'm surprised though sometimes with the things that I remember. So remember that this is the beginning of the journey. Initiation does not make me the end. I'll be all of anything. When you learn hoodoo from me, it is hoodoo as I know it. Hoodoo has vast iterations and regional differences and all different types of magical influences. There is no way to learn it all. You are going to learn things one spell at a time. One spirit interaction at a time. You are going to learn things in the pace that spirits want for you, but you are also going to learn it in the pace that you want it for yourself. And some things people don't want bad enough. And I wanted this bad enough because I felt like, and I still feel like as a Mambo Supwin, that I am still limited in the things that I am able to do. And even as a Mambo Asagwe, I will not know it all. Don't think, and that's the problem, and that's been a lot problem with a lot of white people initiating the African traditional religions because they think that the minute that they initiate, they got the juice. Well, first of all, if you ain't have the juice to begin with, and that's ancestral blood, you ain't never going to get it. Never going to get it, never going to get it. It ain't going to happen. Secondly, it's not a magical download 
You don't go into the Jevo or the Ile or wherever you go for initiation and get every single secret to everything, everything you want to know about voodoo but was afraid to ask. Because sometimes still, depending on your level, you can't ask. Okay? So, I was telling y'all about that sister who was on the internet crying because life had just gotten really difficult for her. And she's on her path to initiation. And I contacted her and I told her, take that shit down. Don't be on here boo-hooing about what you ain't got because you won't never get nothing. And people will know how to attack the stuff that you wish you had before it can even reach you. She did that. She took it down. She got her shit right. I was like, basically, I called her and verbally went like that. You know, you slap somebody when they're hysterical. And baby, let me tell you, she going. She was given everything and then some. And you know why? It came from her dutiful service to the Loa. It blew my mind the way they came through for her. It blew that my mind the way they came through for me. But I'll be goddamned if I recruit one more motherfucker that sends a dollar for charity. If I find out you did it, I ain't got to talk. I can't. I don't have words for you. It's insulting. I'm. I'm. When you don't have it, I understand. There are still days where I don't have. Okay. And that's when all of this stuff that you were supposed to be learning is supposed to take place. That's when you're supposed to go to your spirits and be. The day I put my ancestor altars together, I had not nice words with them. From my mama on down. Because I said, you left me here. You left me with nothing. You didn't even leave me money to put you in the fucking ground. What do you want me to do? And they were like, check your mail, bitch. And I was like, because I don't check my mail. Because I do everything online. I opened up all my junk mail and I found a thousand dollar check from the Bank of America. Because they took my house and that was part of the bailout. I guess that's what they was doing for us. But that thousand dollars helped me set up my first altars. I went and bought the biggest Papa Legba statue I could find, Lazarus. They come through, y'all. Just like in the church, when you give a testimony about what they've done for your lives, you're going to have times of financial tightness. But ATRs also teach you discipline. Okay? Just because you got it don't mean you got to spend it. You understand? Once again, just because you got it and magic can make you spend some shit <laughs> don't mean you got to spend it. I am amazed with some of my repeat customers. I've actually called a couple of them and like, stop. Because I know you haven't used all the shit you just bought from me yet. And still, you got another $200 order here? What you doing, boo-boo? Slow your roll. Use what you have. Yeah, attacked. Why do you think I opened a business? One of the reasons I opened a business is because I can buy all of this stuff without guilt. Because I'm selling it to somebody else. That's not to say that I don't love buying it. I still have a shopping addiction. But I'm spending money to make money. Use your weaknesses wisely. As well as your strengths. You'll do well. You know? I love magical stuff. I'm always looking out for new stuff to sell y'all. That's new stuff for me to buy. Okay? Feel per oh, Andrea, we're we, we not going to tell your business on Facebook. <laughs> I have some very faithful customers on this on this chat. But I had a person who was going to get a head washing and they were also considering investing in something with me. And I when the choice was head washing investment, I was like, "Dude, mm -mm, I'm going to take your money for this investment when you need to get your head washed." That's dirty money. Take care of your spiritual requirements first and everything else is going to fall into place. I don't worry anymore. Yes, I plan. Sometimes I'm concerned. Sometimes I have to think some shit through. But worry? Ain't nobody got time for that. 
All the stuff the church said they was going to teach me, I learned in voodoo. Well, I learned a little bit of it in the church. I had some tests of faith. But baby, the highs and the lows came through voodoo. And I encourage you to seek out your spiritual path. I encourage you to be financially responsible. I encourage you to get with practitioners that are not going to fuck you out of your money or fuck you. Because sexual assault has no place in any religion. Understand that. But understand this. To get, you've got to give. It is reciprocity. It ain't karma. Karma and reciprocity are two different things. And I have to, you know, for me, it takes a lot of extra effort to figure out what I'm supposed to be paying because out of my sales, I got to look at my expenses and all of that. And it's hard work to do that. Um, so it, before you would start receiving all of these blessings, get in the habit of giving first, saving first, giving to yourself, paying yourself, and then using that money to then help other people and to further your spiritual paths. Do you know how much a damn cow costs? You have to have one sacrifice, you have to have a wild boar sacrifice to find out how much that shit costs. Prepare yourselves. Being in magic also stopped, made me stop and think about what I needed. And I still get a lot of stuff that I want. I had to slow my roll on crystals though. Because that was, that was, I remember my daughter looked at my crystal tray and she asked Shadow, are some of those yours? And Shadow was like, no, them, them your mama's. And she looked and she said, there's a lot of money on that table. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, the essential oil. Uh, right. Look at these. Look at all of this in the bottom of this, of my formulations. Up here at the top are all of the bottles of the essential oils. And then all of these are my backups. Okay? And I very rarely, and I admit, like rose oil, high as giraffe's pussy. I don't buy it. I buy a naturally derived fragrance oil. Same thing with sandalwood. But most of those oils you see over there are essential oils. Vetiver is $64 for two fucking ounces. No, I did not see the museum piece. I'm going to have to check that out. I saw a bottle of Hoyt's Cologne that was vintage empty bottle. And I wanted it so bad. And I'm like, do you need that? I mean, like when it comes now to clothes and, uh, you know, I'm sitting in my room. I'm like, you know, you don't need another goddamn piece of jewelry. Yeah, I know. And I've spent, oh God, I don't even want to think about what I've spent on essential oils in the past five years. Probably four to $5,000. You know, oh, see, Tonka, you got Tonka. We need to talk, dude. But he runs a business, you know. And essential oil orders, usually when I order them and I'm ordering them for the most, the least expensive, but quality essential, real essential oils, because there's ways to test that. My essential oils are never, orders are never under $300 to replenish to put in my formulation. That's why I don't sell essential oils because that would just be insane. Um, that's why I just sell the mixtures. I send essential oils to my students in their 201 kits and that's about it. You know, and I've I, I expanded to over 100 herbs because our apothecary here closed. Started selling stuff like frankincense and myrrh, but I started off just selling titty grease and then I went to oils and then I went to all the other things in Conjure. And it took a lot to build it. Okay. You know. Uh, exactly. Don't buy anything that ha doesn't come with some type of certification report. Um, you know. That's certified by uh, whatever body certified that stuff. Um, make sure you're buying real essential oil. There's this one that's on Amazon. If you see a big four ounce bottle of oil for like $3. That ain't essential oil. Read the reviews. Okay. Um. Excuse me, there are a lot of natural places, though, where you can get essential oils. But back to this, honest to God, just the real, the real deal of it. All of titty green, not titty grease, titty green. Like they're my little magical pillows. So, you know, I'm like a gris gris, a titty gris, which are bosom sachets. Nothing new to magic. I just brought them back. 
and they're really wonderful to keep in your bra. Okay. So, uh, I started with those little magical pillows and grew from there and it takes a lot of money. Now imagine if your priest or your priestess is overdoing what they're supposed to do in the country, feeding the needy, um, building your temple, paying for the sacrifices that you need as a member of that house because the regular spiritual work is being done on your behalf. That shit ain't free. Understand that. No difference than when you pay tithes in the church. They needed that money to turn the lights on, to turn the heat on. Man, when I, I watch folks make an electric light out of wire and a light bulb when I was in Haiti. They are the equivalent of making a way out of no way. It is because of the people of Africa and the people of Haiti that we were even able to survive in this country because our ancestors had survival written into the very marrow of their bones. However, we have debts to pay. Our ancestors, our spirits, our gods... And the God parents and spiritual mothers and fathers who lead you there. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing. I don't never see a dime of the money that comes from me recruiting you to initiate. Not like nothing's handed to me. But the blessings of being part of that jeb, that, that pastel, that societe, have rain down on me and folks if you are into magic for the money or for the fame <laughs> don't you'll be sadly and sorely disappointed because humans are still humans and humans are cheap as fuck so that is the end of my rant if you are going to pursue any of these religions you need to support them just as much as you supported the church. And if you didn't support the church and you don't want to support your religious shame on you, then you don't deserve any of the benefits. But I do not want to have another situation where I recruit 20 people and only three people pay. Don't. Don't do it. It's not going to fare well for you with your spirits. Because that's your responsibility. Once you know, you're responsible. So maybe you might want to walk around not knowing for a little while longer while you get your coins together. That is the end of my, my Saturday night rant. And so I'm going to conclude. If you guys have any questions about anything, go ahead now and ask them as I work to get my uh, student box together here. Um sending her her formulation if you um take hoodoo 201 you get five herbs uh, you get six drams of essential oils of your choice of three different types of oils you get the and i can't show you what i'm bagging simply because that was her formulation but you'll get sea salt to make your baths you're going to get resins, frankincense, myrrh, or a resin of your choice. But if you don't choose one, that's what I send you. You get um, a bag of rice flour. And that's to make your powders with. You can use rice flour, arrowroot, whatever. You get an emergency candle. You get a jar. You get two water bottles. You get an oil bottle. You get a cologne bottle. Yeah, you do get a jar for jar spells. You get a little miniature votive so you can fix your candles. And I do a candle pouring class during 2 on 1 and get an oil bottle. And all these are empty. And then I give you your formulation and your what you choose. And I help you. And we talk about your choice of things that you're putting in your formulation. And whether it's masculine, feminine, you know, what, what planetary alignment is it, how you want it to work. We do all that stuff. And then um, I see you at your formulation. And then the following week, we meet online for six hours. And we work through learning how to make all these things. And people are always like, oh, aren't you scared your clients aren't going to come back because you're teaching them how to make all this stuff? 
the, my, my students are some of my biggest, best customers. So, um, alive about upcoming pilgrimages. Well, we don't have any scheduled because every time a schedule one, don't nobody pay. We had a goddess retreat set for this month and nobody paid. So, you know, I would love to do pilgrimages, but I just want to know when y'all going to get up off the money. Y'all wasted my time. Y'all know how much time we spent with a graphic designer. It was so funny because Mambo got the, a graphic designer to do the first flyer in Haiti. And it was not, it looked like um, like a club poster. And so I got Jessica Humphreys, who's done our Black Psychics Association logo. She's um, redoing all of my candles. If you need a, a graphic designer, Jessica Humphrey. Um, and, uh, I got her to redo the flyer and the flyers were amazing. And people, I'm telling you 10 people, this is, this is what this, this live is all about. You done got me on the rant again. 10 people said they wanted to come to the goddess retreat. And yes, I worked my behind off. So I was going to hopefully recruit enough people that my trip would pay for itself. Cause that's usually what happens when you work hard on these types of things. And I was willing to pay for it though. Because I wanted to go and commune with the goddesses. And I wanted to get down with Mama Wata and the Azulis and everybody else. I was amped. And nobody paid. Oh, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm interested. And nobody paid. So, yeah, Aoife, I don't know nothing about it. But, you know, Ia Alori, I love her to death. I refer everybody who's interested in Aoife to Ia Alori. So, she runs Oya's Playground. Santaria, I refer everybody to David Sosa. Um, Kimanda, I refer everybody to Najeri Cruz. So, there are different people that I trust in these traditions that I can refer you to. All I can talk to you about is voodoo, and I ain't going to talk to you much about that unless you're serious. Because, like I said, I've, I've had a very frustrating time with people who don't want to keep their commitments. I'm very proud of the people that I initiated with because they kept their commitments and then some and they continue to do so. But this new these new crops that keep popping up, I don't know. Um, I can't spell her name, but I will make your acquaintance with her K if you're interested. Okay? So just inbox me and I will give you an introduction for Ifa. Okay? You know, and I know lots of lovely people in Ifa. You know, I, I love how we all are similar but different. I love voodoo. I don't think I'll ever pursue any other initiation because I feel like I need to devote my time, brain, space. Because y'all just don't know. Some days I feel like my brain is going to explode. But I keep reading and I keep studying and my mambo, every single time she teaches us classes, she teaches us classes all the time. We have one today and I just was spellbound by what she was dropping on us. And this, this is in preparation for initiation. I'm sitting in on the prep classes with the other initiates. This is not initiatory stuff. Thinking, good and mighty. I can't. I can't how am I going to remember all this? It's, it's something. It's the beginning of the path. But I'm going to tell you all, I'm going to say this again, James, and to anybody else that is beginning their path and trying to get their coins together. Flex your magical muscle. If you practice magic, God damn it, practice magic. Get that money. Get that money. You want to take my class, James, inbox me. You want to take Hoodoo 101? I'll give it to you for free. Okay? You want to take one of my classes? I give it to you. Because I want you to be able to jumpstart your manifestation. I teach you all this not to get rich. Although I would love to be rich. I'm going to need y'all to buy, 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 support, support, support. I, I want a physical store. But I'm not going to put my family or my spiritual financial obligations in jeopardy by going out and getting a storefront that I am not prepared for. Spirit, I know when spirit has something for me. They give it to me. I just swing on in, just popping. When spirit gives something to me, ain't no struggle. That's when I know it's right. And I know this is right for you, James. So you're not going to struggle. You can take my class. 
You can take all three of them. Who do 101, 102, and 103. Okay? If that's what it's going to take for you to get your manifestation and get your money for your EFI initiation, well, let's do this. Okay? Uh, I have half a mind to give away a whole series of classes for free so that um, um, anybody, because I'm so tired of people saying they don't have the money to do this. And I'm telling you, you got to manifest the money. If all you got is this and a cup of water, you better get your butt with this candle and a cup of water and salute your spirits and ask them for what you need. And they ain't going to give you, people be talking about some, be careful for what you pray for. You just might get it. That's like a parent, a parent. If a kid asks for ice cream, you're going to get ice cream. No. Well, maybe sometimes you get ice cream because they try and teach you a lesson because that shit going to give you um, lactose intolerance. They know you shouldn't have no fucking ice cream. They give it to you anyway. That happens. But most of the time, you ain't going to get no shit that you ain't supposed to have. Unless you just really fucking hard-headed and you need a lesson. So make sure that when you're asking for things, you're asking for the right reasons. You're asking because you divined on it. You ask spirit to lead the way. Then you ask them to give you divine guidance, glory, and intuition. Ask for that before you ask for things. Follow the example of King Solomon. Ask for wisdom first. And then everything else will fall into place. So... But yeah, I think I'm going to do a, like a museum week where anybody that wants to come to my classes can come. Because it's never been about the money. But the money, you have to understand, goes to so much more. It, you know, even if I wasn't sending money to Haiti, I'm still doing spiritual stuff for people here. And besides, look at my kids. Aren't they cute? Don't they need to eat, go to school, have clothing, shoes? Mumble's kids are cute. They need to eat and go to school. You know? So, you got to ask. James, and anybody who's listening, and I got to go, y'all, because my, my company has shown up. Listen to this. Well, she family, but spiritual family. Listen. A closed mouth does not get fed. Say it with me, y'all. I want everybody to type it in right now. Everybody who's listening, who's listening to me, type. A closed mouth does not get fed. Type it out. Write it out. When you write it out, it's a petition. A closed mouth does not get fed. K, James, Janet, write it down. Write it down. I will, um, I'll give you the, the schedule. You can check the website for when it is. But write it down. Write it down. Type it down. A closed mouth does not get fed. You don't ask, you don't get. And the only time, only thing they can do is tell you no. What the fuck is no when you ain't got it? What the fuck is no when you don't have it? You still ain't got it. But most of the time when you ask, you will get. Keep that in mind with your spirits. With your family, with your friends, with your teachers. A closed mouth does not get fed. Yes, Letitia, you can. Yes, you can. I will send you the links to the classes. But y'all are going to have to learn how to get. But more importantly, you're going to have to learn how to give when you get it. Because I'm very disappointed in a lot of people that said they was going to do something for their own spiritual good and have come up short. And ain't none of them asked me to do any magic to help them or how they could do the magic themselves to get what they need. But I have seen the folks in my house who have done the work that they've needed to do to get what they needed and they made it happen. And they will give you a testimony. Ain't nothing wrong with a word. Ain't nothing wrong with a testimony. Don't don't throw all of what we have learned from the black church away because it came from someplace else. Remember that. Tithing is not a Christian concept. Supporting your priests and your priestesses has been happening since the beginning of time. 
The old root worker, maybe they ain't had no money, but she had chicken, she had pies, she had folks coming to take care of her house, fix her roof, build her house. Yes, Miss Elder Janet, yes, you can. Okay? Just inbox me. If you are, if your finances are such in dire straits that you cannot afford to take my class, I will put you in a class with other paid people. Now, I am going to say this. If you do have money to take my class, pay because you help pay for other people when you do that. You help pay for the ministry when you help do that. This is a ministry. We got to reach people with our spirits and our gods. We got to reach people with black pride. We got to reach people with black financial independence. And it is not done on a shoestring fucking budget. We can't do that in this day and age. But if you cannot afford it, let me know. And we're going to make a way for you. All right? I always make a way for anybody that needs help because people made a way for me. The people and spirits and gods, goddesses did not make a way for me. Even my mentors, they made a way for me. The voodoo store made a way for me. Somebody made a comment on Coventry Creations Post like, isn't she affiliated with the voodoo store? Like that was something to be ashamed of. They opened a door for me. So no matter what you think about some of these magical practitioners out here, they were part of the spirit's plan. Okay. And for that, I will never be ashamed. All right. Let me go see about my peoples because I got people here. And somebody's coming to help me do some orders and we got a stack back here. I got to get to starting to fall behind. So love, peace, Afro geese. Stay black. Message me if you want to take the classes, okay? Be blessed.